come in here to get free of all that. Amen. 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 Even Amen. though, look, even though you're doubting and tweeting and whining and everything, look where you're sitting. Yeah. So God's still bringing you through it, whether you, you know, you're kicking or enjoying the trip or not, you're still getting through it. You're here. Amen. Amen. And you know you went through some crap. And you're still going to go through some. But guess what? We're not quitting. Something inside us just stays lit. Amen. He says, you know what? Where am I going to yeah. Where am I going to go? Close the book. Where am I going to go? I'm educated. I have light. Where am I going to go? That's right. right. How can I go back into darkness when I have light? It's not going to do me any good. That's right. Some people do, though. And you just pray for them. Now, look what it says. Oh, I love this. We are knocked down but not destroyed through suffering. Okay, now listen. Please get this concept. I'm trying to give you a principle here. Through your suffering. Is anybody suffering tonight? Okay. Pay attention now what I'm trying to say to you. Through your suffering, the Bible tells us clearly in Scripture, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus. Okay? What it does is crucifies our flesh. It's trying to say, look, through suffering, so, in other words, we have to go through suffering in order to become Christ-like. This is something part of the process. Look, through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death, right, of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. What it's saying is, it's killing off your flesh, and it's bringing up your spiritual life, so you can see more of Jesus and less of you. Amen. And it's only through suffering that we get there. But you have to handle it properly. You can either get better and get closer to the Lord, or get bitter, shake your fist at the Lord, and go back and worship the devil. You have two choices. Or go back into your flesh again. But there's a principle there that we need to understand and grow. Okay, I'm going through suffering so I can become like Jesus. That's part of the trip. A lot of people teach you, you should be getting blessed all the time. Prosperity and wealth. Everything's going to come your way. Your best life today. I'm saying, what am I doing wrong? I'm not getting that. Because it's not biblical. It says through suffering. Not through blessing. Do we get Look, to become more like Christ, it's through suffering, not through blessing. Amen. But the flesh wants blessings. Yep. I'm a child of God. I've been serving. I want to get blessed. <laughs> <laughs> then you got songs. I want to be like Jesus. Do you really? Well, okay. I'm going to show you how it happens. You want to become like Christ? Well, this is what it's called. Crucifixion of the flesh. Amen. I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I not I live, but he lives through me. And the life I live from here on in is in the faith of the Son of God. Amen. I don't live for myself anymore. I live for Him. That's right. Very simple pr principle that Christians can't grasp. They still go live for themselves. That's a fact. Yeah. <laughs> now look what it says. Look at verse 11. Yes, we live under constant danger of death because we serve Jesus so that the life of Jesus will be evident in our dying bodies. So we live in the face of death, but this has resulted in eternal life for you. They were willing to die for their cause, to show Christ. I know. Go through what I, if, you, if you realize what the Apostle Paul went through, prison, whippings, and everything else, and he got people saved that were beaten him. He was singing in prison with the chains on, in the stops. They say, what's wrong with this guy? What is what is up with him? Do you, do you realize? Do you realize the only way the world is going to see something from Christ is something crazy like that when they're suffering, that they're just rejoicing in the Lord instead of complaining and griping. Paul wasn't griping and complaining. He was on. He knew that God put him there to get the jailer saved. Wherever God has you through your situations and suffering, He has a purpose in it for you. If you've only seen it. Why am I going through this? Or if you're seeing the purpose saying, okay, why has God got me going through this? There has to be something here. Yeah. Let me look for him in this. Amen. And then you shut up and stop complaining. Amen. You'll look for him in it. Yep. You're looking for your way out and he's putting you in it. <laughs> there is no way out. Once you get in, you can't get out. Yes, you 
You better thank God that once you get in His family, you can't get out of His family. Amen. God is the owner. <laughs> and the, the thing of it is, He's never going to stop working on you. As long as you try to stop working on Him, He ain't going to stop working on you. It doesn't depend on you. That's right. Once He calls you, He calls you. Amen. You're the only one to lose out on the benefits when you don't answer the call. Right. He don't lose out. He just gets someone else to do it. Whenever the opportunity comes to serve, you should jump on it because that's God calling you into his kingdom. Amen. When you reject it, you're rejecting God. And the ones who keep going get blessed and rewarded here yeah, for it. Amen. Instead of having to wait to get blessed when they go to heaven. Yeah. That's the, truly only, the only thing that comes. All right, so there's so many benefits of being a child of God. Last time we talked, we talked about... The moment you were spiritually born into God's family, you were given some astounding birthday gifts, okay? When you're born again, it's like a new birth. Amen. The Bible tells us. You're born again spiritually. Even though you have this nasty flesh that doesn't really want what God wants, we have something else in us that does. Amen. And it's called the Holy Spirit. Yep. And isn't that an awesome thing? See, it doesn't take, you know, even though you're weak and you're fallen, doesn't take, that doesn't what shows that you have the Holy Spirit. The difference is you understand something different now. You're saying, wow, I have, I'm born again. I have the Spirit of God in me. Even though this flesh don't want to do good, something in me does. Yep. Even though I can't carry it out yet because I'm not grown enough, there's something in me that wants to please God. Get it? Amen. You want to please your Father in heaven because he put the Holy Spirit in you. And even though you fail and beat yourself up, you shouldn't beat yourself up because Jesus took that beating for you. Amen. Conviction, Amen. yes. Guilt, no. We're all growing. We're all a work in progress. He's going to work on us till we go be home. Amen. The thing, guilt and beating yourself up is no way to get closer to God. That's right. It drives you further and further away from God and more and more into your flesh. That's right. Because you have to understand one thing. The flesh cannot please God. No. Nope. So when you try to please God in your flesh, you fail. Amen. And you get miserable. Because that's not from God. No, that wasn't me. Remember when um, Abraham wanted a kid? Yeah. He said, well, she's, she's too old. So Sarah said, well, get her. Mm -hmm. In the flesh, they try to have Ishmael. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, this is my child. God says, no, that's not from me. That's from you. Yeah. The child I'm going to give you is going to be from me. See the difference? They didn't wait on God. Right. And they caused a lot of problems because of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The same principle goes for us. We don't wait on God either. We cause a lot of problems for it. Like the right person, the right thing. We try to fit everything in. Instead of waiting on God. And said, oh, I'm going to let God set up this circumstance. And he's going he's to lead me in this. I'm not just going to jump into something. Right. Because just jumping into something usually isn't from the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's from the flesh. Amen. How do I know these things? We're going through it from going through all the stuff that I did, jumping on stuff. No, and that ain't from God. That's from you trying to do it, John. And that results in what? Misery. Yeah. See, when God blesses, there's no, there's no sorrow. Sorrow. No sorrow. Amen. So we get some awesome things. We get some birthday gifts. Amen. You know when you have your birthday, you get some nice gifts and you have a nice <laughs> birthday. Um, you were given some, you've got the family name, right? You've got God's child. Never take that away. You're a child of God forever. Once you're born in, thank God for that, right? Amen. Just like your biological family, even though you might not get along with them, you're still, that's still your father. The relationship never changes. It's the that's same right. idea. Amen? Amen? That's a good thing. Family likeness, family privileges. An intimate access in the family inheritance. Intimate access to God through our Lord. Personal. Intimate. Intimate. You know when you have an intimate relationship with someone? I'm not talking sexual. Intimate way. You're very close to them and you can just tell them anything about you. You just love them. They're intimate with them. You, you don't have to put on a mask. You don't have to hide anything from them. You can just be intimately involved with that relationship knowing that they're not going to judge you. <clears throat> or try to give you advice when you're just trying to talk. See, you yeah. got one thing. You ever talk to God? He doesn't say, well, you should have did that. <laughs> well, I told you to do that. No, God doesn't do that. He just listens. Amen. Look, anybody that's spiritual and talking about something, look, just 
Keep your mouth shut and listen to what they have to say. Don't try to. They're not asking for you to help them. They're just asking you to hear them. It's an intimate relationship. Shut up and listen. <laughs> look, the only advice you can give them is, look, Jesus loves you. He's going to pray. I'm going to pray for you because I'm not strong enough. I can't even help myself if you're honest. You'll stop trying to be some savior. And say, you know what, I'm just going to pray for you. Because, you know, I don't know, I'm going to mess myself. And you can be intimate with them. And they'll say, yeah, yeah I hear you. We're all in the same boat. Amen. Amen. That's true. And then somebody says, well, no, you know what you need to do? You need to go in here and read this. And then go here and here and here. And that's going to help you. No, keeping your mouth shut is going to help me. Just like God does. <laughs> Let me tell you something about God. He'll bring you to Scripture. Yes. If you keep quiet and listen to yes. Him, He'll prompt your heart to go to a Scripture. Yes, He yeah. will. But most people don't give God ear time. Mm -hmm. They start calling people. Hey, I'm going. Hey, da, 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 da. God's saying, no, those, are, those, those aren't me. I'm God. They're not. Once you understand that, you'll stop... You know, once you start hounding people too much, they won't answer the phone anymore anyway. <laughs> once all you do is talk negative and problems, they won't they ain't picking up. Jesus hears everything, okay? He listens to your whining, he listens to your complaining, he listens to it all. And he doesn't say a peep about it. You know what he says? I love you. Amen. Just come to me. Amen. I'm the only one that can help you. Amen. That's the God of the Bible. It's intimate and personal, and people just don't use that personal, intimate part, the most important part of it all, that father-child relationship, when you can fully trust and give your heart to him. Amen? You, you, you're born into that. You have it. People who go to Dr. Phil, Oprah, or the news, or the paper, or the rape. It's like... Do you really think they have a solution? <laughs> no. <laughs> There's only one solution. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. And now, when people say, well, Jesus is, yeah, this is Jesus. The Word of God is Christ. Amen. Christ is the Word. It's not some dude. It's the Word. <laughs> I'm going to Jesus. I'm going to the book. I'm going to go read what he has to He wants to talk to me through his words. Amen. That's how God speaks to us. And the last place we go is in here. I want to talk to God. Well, yeah, there he is. From Genesis to Revelation, you want to talk to him? Go in there. He wants to talk to you too. He wants to speak to you through his word. Amen. And he will. Yes. If your heart is right. If you seek me with all your heart, you will surely find me. Amen? Amen. So, you got that. As children of God, we get to share the family fortune. Here on earth, we're given the riches of his grace, his kindness, his patience, his glory, his wisdom, his power and mercy. Everything we need here to handle life here. Amen. God has given us everything we need to handle life on life's terms. Why do we go to other sources as Christians? Why do we go reach for other things? Why do we got to add anything to what God is saying? We don't need anything else but Him. Amen. And when we reach for other stuff, it's not wholeheartedly going after God. It's God plus this. I need God plus this to get through life. God plus this. I need this, this, and this. No, Jesus, the Bible says Christ is all you need, and he lives in everybody. If you believe it, that's all you need. Can I get an amen for that? I'm trying to speak to my head. Stop reaching for all the nonsense the world offers. The world offers a, a counterfeit to what God offers. That's right. For your peace and safety and joy and health. That's right. He healed us from everything. Well, I don't feel healed. Well, no, it's not a feeling. It's a fact. You might have to limp your way to heaven. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You remember Jacob? Yes. 
He had to take his, he knocked out his hip. He limped for the rest of his life walking with God. Look, you might have to be crippled a little bit. Why does it do it? Because it keeps you walking with the Lord. It keeps you humble enough to walk with Him. When we try to fix what He broke to get closer to Him, and then He'll fix it in His time and His way, if you trust Him. That's all up to you. That's right. I don't know about you, but God's been getting me to a lot. But it's been taking a long time. And that's all I got is time here. So I must well let him work on me while I'm here, no? Yes. He's preparing me for something better. Yes. I don't bore you, but sometimes I get up and it's like, this wants to go. I got to go, oh man, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh. And those of you young might not sense it yet, but it's coming. <laughs> oh, it'll catch up. It'll catch up with you. Takes us a few more stretches to get up. You know, he, uh, holding on to the railing to get up the first couple of stairs. <laughs> say, well, pretty soon I'm going to be holding on to the rail to get off. <laughs> One thing's for sure. Look, God sets the day you were born, and he sets the day you're going to die. Nobody out there can set that day. That's right. People have been trying to stay young, this, that, and other. Look, your time's up, it's up. God sets the time when you're going to die. Yeah. People haven't conquered that yet. How do they, they can't stop us from aging. How come? I'm so, so smart, science. Why can't they stop us from getting old and getting all these broken bones and all these breaking parts? Right. They can't fix that. No. They can't stop it. They can't stop Father Time, can they? No. No, why? Because they can't, because it's God. You can't. You can't. <laughs> See? Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Amen. Look, everybody tries to substitute and do things without God. We can do this, we can fix that, we can fix this, we can fix that. No, God can fix anything. He makes the impossible possible. See, God is supernatural. See, He brings us to the end of ourselves to show there's no way humanly possible to do this. And then God comes and does it. That's how you understand how God works. You have to understand the limitations of your flesh. And you have to know the limitless. God is limitless of God. He will, he will do for you what you can never do for yourself. But the problem is the waiting period. People will not wait on God. They turn away from him too soon. He wants to get you through it and you go back into Egypt again before you get to the top of the mountain to find belief. And you know what I'm trying to say, yes. right? But once you grow past that point where you suffered enough, he said, I ain't going back to Egypt. I'm going to suffer my way through this one because I'm growing. Amen. Amen. I'm growing. I ain't going that way no more. That's how you know you're growing. You're really getting a good understanding of the Lord and how he works. I'm going to go through some suffering, and I'm going to do it to glorify him. Amen. And let him change me through it. Amen. Get it? Get yes. the principle? Yes. That's a benefit of being a child of God. And most Christians don't use that benefit. Waiting on God. If you look in the Old Testament, how long before he rescued his people out of Egypt? Does anybody know? Or do you want me to remind you how long it took them to get out of slavery? 400 years. They were there for 400 years before he delivered them out of there. They was in the wilderness for 40 years. Noah was building an ark for a hundred years in the desert before God finally did what he was going to do. See, we're just, in America, is this like, I should be a lot more further along than this. It's been 15 minutes. <laughs> I should not be able, I shouldn't be thinking that nasty thought anymore because I'm a child. I shouldn't be thinking that way anymore. 
I've been a child of God for 20 minutes, and I've been <laughs> in the world for 20 years. And my thinking should be done now. It should be like USB defrag done. <laughs> no, my mind has to get renewed over time, and Christians don't give it a chance to take root. And they don't give themselves a break. But then Christians just lay on that too and say, well, you know what? There's nothing I can do. It's the wrong concept both ways. I can do all things through Christ, but he works in his time and his way. We're just waiting on the Lord, doing the right thing while we're waiting. Amen. All right, go to Ephesians chapter 1. We're going to get through uh, tonight, hopefully, the benefits of being a child of God. And the next time we meet, we're going to talk about the benefits of being a servant of the Lord. Two different principles. Being a child of God depends on your belief, but being a servant of God requires obedience. Whole different issue. Whole different issue. 15 10. You want to get rewarded down here? You have to become his servant and become obedient to his ways. That's how you get rewarded down here. Okay. Look what it says in verse 16. What chapter, John? Ephesians chapter 1. Paul said in Ephesians 1, 16, I have not stopped thanking God for you. He's talking to the Ephesians. I pray for you constantly. See, Paul never prayed to him for himself. Think about, think about the principle. Paul was a servant of the Lord. Are you praying for yourself? Or are you praying for others? That's how you know when you kicked off into being a servant. When it's not, I'm not praying for me. I'm praying for others now. God's already taking care of me. Amen. He's meeting all my needs. It says it right here. I pray for you constantly. He prayed for his people. Asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so you might grow in your knowledge of God. So listen. Or it would be a good prayer. You pray that someone would what? Get spiritual wisdom and insight so that they can grow in their knowledge of God. And look, when people are failing and they're coming to you for advice, you pray for them to get spiritual wisdom and insight so they grow in the knowledge of God, not knowledge of you. Right. Knowledge of God. You bring them to Scripture. You bring them to God. Say, listen, this is what God spoke to me on. He brought me here. Amen. And it's not getting that stupid worldly advice out of your head. It doesn't work. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light. Listen to the... What are you praying? That tells me where you're at. That tells you where you're at. What are you praying for? Oh, get me out of this one. Or get them away from me. I don't want them in my life anymore. Oh, Lord, please, bless me with a caddy. Bless me with a better home. Lord, please, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. I don't know what you're praying for. You ask yourself that. Say, am I praying that or am I praying this? Flooded with light so you can understand the confident hope he has given to those who called, he called his holy people, who are as rich in glorious inheritance. Glorious inheritance. Or called in the rich and glorious inheritance he has given to his holy people. Look, I also pray that you will understand 